All right, everyone, welcome back to the land of Kev. I am your host and author. My name is Jeffrey Drum. Thank you all so much for joining me again. All right, everyone, welcome back. This is episode 123. And today I will be presenting something that once again, you will not see anywhere else. An examination and geological analysis of the mysterious blue stone of ancient Egypt. You heard that right, ladies and gentlemen, this stone is blue. If this is the type of content you're interested in regarding the ancient technology of a lost civilization, utilizing physics and chemistry, and the function of the Egyptian pyramids and other ancient structures from across the world, this is the channel for you. So please subscribe to The Land of Chem here on YouTube, and don't forget to click that little notification bell so that you do not miss the new episodes that premiere twice per week. Please like, comment, stay tuned if you want to help support this channel and get access to exclusive research and unreleased footage you will not see anywhere else. Check out the members-only channel and thelandofchem.com if you want to pick up a copy of the book or grab some merch. If you want to follow me on Instagram, my handle is at thelandofchem. Also, don't forget, after you finish watching this video, Please go subscribe to our two new channels here on YouTube, Egyptian Trash Cats, for all you cat lovers out there, and Egypt Eats for food reviews. Ladies and gentlemen, as always, thank you all so much for the support. I think that's it for the intro, so without further ado, let's get right to it. And just a quick reminder that one of the most significant research projects that I have ever produced is now available exclusively on the Members Only channel. Episode 9, The Function of the Osiris Shaft, featuring an explanation of the function of this underground chamber system almost 100 feet below the Giza Plateau, and some new, never-before-seen footage from a recent private special permission entry into the site. So if you want access to this type of exclusive research and unreleased footage, come join us on the dark side at the Land of Chem members-only channel, link in the video description below. All right, everyone, here we go with tonight's episode. And to begin, we will start by investigating an artifact that was brought to my attention by my colleagues at the Asita Project, which sparked my interest in this extremely rare and perplexing stone material. And you may be able to see it already in contrast to the surrounding environment here at a structure known as the Headless Pyramid in Saqqara. This structure is located over here, to the northeast of the Pyramid of Teddy I, and in close proximity to the Pyramid of Userkoth, over here, which we'll get to in just a moment. And the first artifact that you'll see today is in an off-limits area of the Saqqara Archaeological Complex over here. So here it is, your first up-close look at the blue stone lid found in the core of this completely dismantled pyramid. This is an absolutely spectacular artifact that displays some exceptional craftsmanship in its design and execution. This stone slab is now upside down and you're looking at the bottom side of the lid featuring a sliding locking mechanism in the center that was used to secure this piece into position atop the lower portion of the container. The container itself has now been completely destroyed and only rubble fragments remain strewn about the site today. It also has some core drill holes that were also part of a pin locking mechanism that secured the lid into place on top of the container. So now let's take a look at a digital recreation of this feature from the Asita Project website and take a look at some of the footage from their 2012 special permission access to the site. All right, here is a really cool interactive 3D model showing the lid and the container. And you can see here how these grooves along each side of the container would have been used to lock this lid into place. And then two pins would have dropped down into these holes, 
completely securing the lid. Here again, you can see the groove that I just showed in those pictures and how it corresponds to the same shape within the container itself. And the two holes here, again, that pin mechanism that locked the lid into place on top of the container. Another exceptional 3D recreation by ACIDA Project team member Alexi. Now, let's move on to another in situ artifact found inside the Pyramid of Userkhof, which you can see here, also located in Saqqara, adjacent to the Step Pyramid complex. My wife Alexa and I had a private special permission access inside of this off limits pyramid. And this expedition was also inspired by the Asita project after I saw their footage from 2012. We were the first people to re-enter this structure after 12 years, and we obtained high-definition footage of this bewildering blue stone container, the fragments of which you can see here. And the hue of this stone was absolutely mesmerizing, and it contained small inclusions of copper minerals, as you can see here, and a close-up here. After close examination, this appears to be the same type of stone that we just saw at the Headless Pyramid. But this slab and a pile of broken fragments behind it are all that remain of what once may have been another immaculately constructed container inside of this primary chamber. So now let's take a look at some of the exclusive footage from my private entry inside of the Pyramid of Userkhof last year. And last but not least, the remains of the container. And I'm sure you could hear it when we were standing over here. This thing has been shattered into a million pieces. And you can see here, this is the original floor level here. And all of this was excavated down. They removed material out of here. And this container was most likely sunken into the floor, the same way as we see at the central pyramid where that container is sunken down into the floor. Now, where the story gets more interesting. 
the chemical composition of said container. Look at the color. I'm not going to say what color it is because we'll be coming to that later. But this is not your everyday piece of stone, ladies and gentlemen. This is a very special material. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll be transparent with you. This is the whole reason I came down in here. Was so we could get a up close look at this artifact. Because this is a type of stone that we have not seen in our previous expeditions. And we're about just pulled up a spectacular piece here. luster, the microcrystalline quartz in there. And there's another finished edge here. Again, they, they busted this sarcophagus container into hundreds of pieces. I mean, the whole thing is just shattered and destroyed. And I'll show you an image of something at the Headless Pyramid, which is also located here in Saqqara, that's made of a similar material. Again, I think you can see there the color that we're looking at here. And the reason I'm not gonna say it yet is because this requires more investigation. I want to be able to more fully understand why we're looking at this material. I know what it is already. I want to understand why. This is remarkable. And again, the, the machining or the finishing of this artifact would have been absolutely spectacular. And I think on these two pieces, you can really see the, the color. It's not black. Which in the pyramid of Winis and Teddy the first, it's black gray weck. And you can see in the... The little tiny flecks of quartz. Very special piece of stone. So I have to say, this is one of the most unusual structures that I've been in here in Egypt. All right, next, on to the temple of Ptah Shepsis at Abu Sir and the remnants of yet another blue stone artifact that has been placed adjacent to the entrance on the eastern side. And I do not think this piece of stone is in its original place, and no one knows exactly where it came from or how it got here. And you can see from these pictures, the beautiful blue color of this stone. And up until recently, I had never seen this artifact in person, 
but I knew exactly where it was, thanks to my colleague Olga at the Asita Project. And during the recent 2024 Land of Chem Ancient Alchemy and Ascension Tour, we had private, special permission access to Abu Sir. And of course, I took my tour group along with me in search of this exquisite piece of stone. Check this out. guys to get caught up so you can see this thing in person. <laughs> this can you open it? Oh. Oh. <laughs> so this is not black basalt. Grow back Oh this uh, thing, what do they call this stone? Blue. So this oh. is blue. Oh. <laughs> this is the same. If anybody has a bottle, bottle of water, you can. Is it okay to put water here? Water, yeah. some water. Yeah. And you can see once it dries, we can actually look at the oh, sorry, sorry. the quality of this stone and the finishing of this stone. Wow. No one when have you ever heard yeah. of blue stone in Egypt? Yeah. We've seen uh, black basalt. We've seen black gray wax. We've seen red granite. We've seen red quartzite. We've seen limestone. There are only a few places in Egypt that have this extremely unique type of blue stone and just wait it'll dry probably by the time that we're here it should dry off it's already starting to dry we found this inside the pyramid of Usarkov if you go back and watch that video the destroyed container inside of the pyramid of Usarkov is this same type of blue stone they have a structure here called the Headless Pyramid in Saqqara, which has been completely destroyed. But there are remnants of this same type of blue stone. Have you ever seen photos from the top of the Great Pyramid? And it looks like there's one very unusual, out of place black stone on the top of the Great Pyramid. Mm. The stone isn't black, it's blue. It looks like it was a sort of pointy thing. There's no telling what this artifact was originally. It feels like a tuning it's, fork. It, it's, it's very unusual, almost sounds like metal. Do you know tuning fork? Yeah. Like zinc. So this is blue. And just a quick announcement. New Land of Chem merch is now available. I just dropped the Nano Gold 5th degree logo on a black t-shirt and hoodie 
and I'm very excited to present the new spectacular white horse logo on a black hoodie and the premium high definition extra large white horse logo on this exceptional quality black t-shirt. And once again, thank you so much to friend and supporter of the channel, Adam Arrington from New Zealand for collaborating with me on this new logo design. He has done some amazing work in helping me bring my ideas for the Land of Chem logos to life. And if you wanna check out more of his work, I'll put a link to his Instagram in the video description below. The Egyptian blue version of the Land of Chem book and the last 30 or so of the signed first edition purple orchid paper print are still available. So if you wanna show some love, just check out thelandofchem.com and thank you all so much for the support. All right, now that you've seen the blue stone artifacts at the Headless Pyramid and inside the Pyramid of Userkov in Saqqara and the one near the Temple of Ptah Shepsis at Abu Sir, there is only one other place where this blue stone has been found. And you can see it here at the top of the Great Pyramid of Giza. And I'll show a close up at the end of the video so you can really get a good look at this single brick of a very out of place blue stone. Now, I can't confirm with absolute certainty that this is the same type of stone as access to the top of the pyramid is now completely forbidden. But I would bet money on this being the same type of blue stone that we just saw in the previous examples. And there are some questions to answer about it that I'll get to in just a moment. But first, let's check out the geological analysis to determine exactly what type of stone this is. And I made a short about this a while back, and I had wrong answer after wrong answer, and no one was able to correctly identify this blue stone. So now, thanks to the Acida project, we have a definitive answer. And here is the paper presenting the material analysis from Dr. Berdnikov lead geologist of the Acida project with a microscope examination revealing a fine grained sandstone polymictic consisting of sharp edge fragments of quartz and rare feldspar grains enclosed in a sericite chloride cement. And a close up here. So what we have here, ladies and gentlemen, is blue sandstone with extremely high content of microcrystalline quartz. And most likely what is contributing to the blue color is cobalt. And if you start Googling blue sandstone, you will find all sorts of interesting results that I'll be getting to in a follow-up episode. But unfortunately, when it comes to this blue sandstone lid at the Headless Pyramid in Saqqara, once again, the sands of time have begun to consume the site. And given that this is an off-limits area with no ongoing preservation efforts, this excavated area of the primary chamber has now been completely refilled with sand. As you can see here in a picture from seven years after the original expedition by the Acida Project. And the lid itself is now almost completely reburied. So we are extremely fortunate to have this exceptional work from the Acida Project confirming the material composition of this blue sandstone, which appears to be the same material found inside the Pyramid of Userkhof and in front of the Temple of Patashepsis in Abu Sir, but also on top of the Great Pyramid. The question remains, what the hell is a single piece of blue stone doing on top of the Great Pyramid? How did it get there? Were there originally more pieces of this blue stone atop this massive structure? And what functional properties does this stone have in relation to the operation of these structures? All of these questions will be answered in the mysterious blue stone of ancient Egypt part two. So please subscribe and stay tuned. All right, everyone, that is it for today's video. This was episode 123, the mysterious blue stone of ancient Egypt. I really hope you enjoyed today's video and in this week's Sunday site visit, 
more exclusive footage from our private special permission access inside the Great Pyramid of Giza featuring the Queen's Chamber. This is an episode you do not want to miss, so please subscribe to the Land of Chem here on YouTube if you're interested in the ancient technology of a lost civilization utilizing chemistry and physics and the function of the Egyptian pyramids and other ancient structures from across the world. Please like, comment, and stay tuned. If you want to help support this channel, check out the Land of Chem members-only channel and thelandofchem.com if you want to pick up a copy of the book or grab some merch. Links in the video description below. If you want to follow me on Instagram, my handle is at thelandofchem. Also, don't forget, after you finish watching this video, please go subscribe to our two new channels here on YouTube, Egyptian Trash Cats for all you cat lovers out there in Egypt, please, for food reviews. Ladies and gentlemen, as always, thank you all so much for the support. I think that's it for today's episode. So I will see you next time. Yo, are you still watching this? Please subscribe to the Land of Chem here on YouTube and click that little notification button. New videos coming out every single week. And check out this other episode. Come on, do it. Do it now.